Hi, my name is Pete Gerlach. I have been a professional psychotherapist for 31 years. Part of that work has evolved into specializing uh, on helping people who are survivors of significant childhood uh, trauma. What I mean by that is parental abuse, abandonment, and neglect. <clears throat> Those are epidemic in our country. Many people are unaware of them because people who were raised in that environment think that those traumas were, quote, normal. They don't know what normal is. One of the things that happens to those of us who were raised in what I call low nurturance childhoods, we automatically develop up to six psychological wounds or uh, injuries. One of them is a fragmented personality. <clears throat> I don't mean multiple personality, though that happens to a minority of people. But we develop, in order to survive, what can be called a false self. When that happens, we grow up to five psychological wounds. One of the most crippling wounds is excessive shame. It is the absolute unquestioned belief that we are somehow an inferior person. Our rights, our needs, and our opinions are somehow worth less than other people. <clears throat> this is popularly called having low self-confidence or low self-esteem. That's the bad news. Excessive shame, or being a shame-based person influenced by excessive shame, cripples relationships, it cripples assertion, it cripples your achievements, it hinders your, your physical health. There are many spin-offs of the crippling condition of excessive shame. The good news is, once you're aware of this and you admit you have this condition, there are several powerful things you can do to reduce it. The first is, accept the idea that your personality is made up of subcells and you're a normal person, you're not crazy. The second thing is, once you do, work to free your resident true self. It's the first step in reducing psychological wounds that you received from your ancestors. As you free your true self, one of the specific concrete goals, recovery goals, that you can adopt is I am going to retrain my subcells who were taught early on to believe that I am an inferior, unlovable, incompetent person. I'm going to retrain my subcells because that was and is not the truth. One of the ways you can do that is to consciously and intentionally evolve something called a Bill of Personal Rights. It's a piece of paper which you compose and on it you state the rights you have as a worthy, unique, dignified human being. What are these rights? If you're a shame-based person, this will seem alien to you. You may be skeptical or cynical. Um, keep working at it. These are some typical rights. There are many of them, but here are some important ones. I claim I have the right as a unique, worthy person to my perceptions and my opinions. Other people may disagree with those, but I have the right to mine. I have the right to my feelings, my emotions. I have the right to feel them and to express them in the way that I choose. And I'm responsible for how I express them. That's my right. I have the right to set my own life goals and how and when to pursue them. No one has the right to dictate my life goals. No one. I have the right to choose my friends and how and when to socialize. 
I have the right to guide and choose my own appearance, even if it offends some other people. I claim the right as a dignified, unique human being to develop and use my own spirituality, my own version of God or higher power. That is my right, and no one has the right to impose their beliefs on me. I claim the right to spend my time the way I think is best for me, and I am responsible for making that choice. These are just some of a collection of personal rights you have as a dignified, worthy person. You may not have been taught these rights as a very young child, and you may have just brought that illusion into adulthood. You can change that illusion into reality now. Work to free your true self, and as you do, Retrain your subselves, especially your shamed inner child, to believe and live by rights like these. As you do, be aware that every other person has the same rights as you do. You don't have the right to impose these rights on other people. I encourage you to contemplate the wisdom of something called the Gestalt Prayer by a very skilled, famous therapist named Fritz Perls. He proposed, <clears throat> I am I and you are you. I knew my thing and you do your thing. I'm not in this world to live up to your expectations and you're not in the world to live up to mine. If we meet by chance, it's beautiful. If we don't, it can't be helped. That's the Gestalt prayer. I find that's very reinforcing for having and living from a personal Bill of Rights. If you want to see the full example of such a Bill of Rights, here's the web address of a free article that I've composed over many years as someone recovering from psychological wounds. I invite you to read it and then make your own bill. Don't use mine. Make your own. Enjoy freeing your true self and um, enjoying enjoy your own integrity and dignity as a worthwhile human being. Thanks for watching.